helps to know where these different plants grow. And this one likes to be down near the water or even right in the swamp. They're probably all over in that swamp right there. But this is, uh, let me get on the other side of it so the sun's not blinding the camera. Nanny berry. I did a video on this. I'll be posting it if it isn't up already. But nanny berry, black haw, wild raisin. And uh, has opposite branching, but uh, pretty easy to identify, even from a distance with these leaves that start turning red in the fall. But there's no berries on it. And that's. Uh, Brings up something else, you know, it's a good spot for, uh, probably a good spot for hunting squirrels. Because if there isn't any nanny berries on these, that means the squirrels ate them already. So there's probably a lot of squirrels in here. And as a matter of fact, when I was coming down, I jumped up a deer, which ran off into the swamp. I didn't even get to see it. And two squirrels went running up into the woods right from this general area. There's a whole bunch of nanny berries in here. That's probably what they've been coming in here looking for. Now a lot of times later in the season, those squirrels and stuff, they'll eat the acorns and all the berries in the woods and uh, you'll be out in the open hardwoods where the squirrels normally are and you won't see any. It's because they're, they're all right there in the swamp because that's the last place they go to get all those berries that uh, nothing else got to in the early season. Maybe I'll venture in there a little bit. Yeah, as soon as I get in here, I mean, I'm right on a deer trail. This would normally be, uh, I mean, it's pretty soft, but normally this would be real muddy. I mean, you might sink down two feet, but we've just had a really dry year. So it gives me an opportunity to get back in here without getting my feet all muddy. It's probably right where that deer was standing when I came down out of the woods. He took off right through here. Deer season opens up tomorrow. It's not open yet. And if it was, you know, opening day, I'd leave the woods alone for the hunters. At least opening day. Yeah, see these are trails. This is an intersection. Comes back this way going out of the woods. Goes off that way along the edge of the swamp. And it goes back this way. We'll go back through here. I had a, I was out the other day, uh, met up with a buddy and some guy pulled up and was asking if there was any good spots on state land around here to hunt. And I told him that, uh, you know, these areas get a lot of hunting pressure. So once season kicks in, especially after bow season's over with, the deer are pretty skittish and they tend to just stay right in these swamps until nighttime. And uh, I told him I figured this would be his best bet if he could uh, manage to get down in the swamp and hunt. And in a year like this, when it's really dry, that would be a good option because you could get back in here a little better. 
and the deer they tend to not expect you being in the swamp as much but this would be a great spot to stalk just walk through here real slow I mean I did a video on stalking deer where I was in the woods and uh, you can kind of get an idea of how it's done by watching that video but I'm definitely not being quiet enough today you'd have to plan every single footstep and not step on a single twig or leaf or anything and uh, if you move slow enough you can get right within point blank of these deer I mean there will be a deer sitting right there and he'll jump up and bolt off and uh, a lot of times they're so close they scare me and I don't get a shot because I'm I'm just shocked from them jumping up so close but if you're prepared for it and you're thinking and you're ready you can get them this is a real good way to do it and this is a way to get the big bucks too even on state land because they'll sit right here they'll sit within you know a hundred yards or even a hundred feet of a food source or a field where they're gonna be uh, rutting and breeding depending on the time of the season and uh, you can get right down in there only thing is is if you do scare one up I'm walking right on the deer run that's what this is right here And I'll stop when I got a, a vision, a straight line down the trail. And I'll just carefully move my head side to side and try to look between all those shrubs and grasses. And uh, a lot of times you'll see the deer and he'll be staring right at you. And the only thing you'll distinguish is his nose and ears. When they stare right at you, they have a, a distinct facial pattern and uh, if you can learn to recognize that pattern it'll stick right out but you gotta look for it because I guarantee you if there's a deer at within at least within 50 to 100 yards of me he knows I'm here right now and he's probably listening and watching and deciding whether he should stay bedded down or run See, I'm pretty much walking on relatively dry ground here. But normally, this water, there would be water in here, and it would be about that deep, which is about a foot. And you can see it on all the trees around here. That one, it looks darker at the bottom. That's usually underwater all through here. Now I followed that deer all the way through the swamp and uh, looks like it came right out through here into this big open probably swampy field. There's another big run right there. See those deer probably come out here at night, I would bet, especially during the rut. Huh? You know, all the time I've been here, I never even knew this field was here because I could never get back to it. That's the first time I've had it where that has been uh, water free. Usually there's a foot or two of water all the way through where I just walked. There's some nice rose hips though. That's another thing you don't find very often around here are these large rose hips. Now I found out that these uh, 
these large rose hips I believe they do get those irritating hairs in them but the small uh, multiflora roses I don't have a problem with the hairs but I've had people say that these big ones have irritating hairs in them so you have to strain them out or something but that's pretty cool normally don't find them that big around here that's quite rare Maybe they like the swamp edge because there's a whole bunch more right there. If I walk down through here, I'll probably find even more of them. I'm going to go over there where that little line of trees is. I think it's maybe a little bit higher ground. Maybe I can actually see throughout, throughout this field because as it stands, I'm sinking down and grass and stuff and I can't really see much beyond that grass which is right in front of me see now I know those deer are coming out in this field at night because here's yet another trail coming out of the swamp and right out into this open field this is kind of tough walking through it's real spongy If I stick to this deer trail, it's a little easier. Let's try walking right there through that. It actually gets kind of tiring. Even though it's just grass, it's really deep grass. Ooh. With big holes here and there. get over there if I can.